a little bit of a headwind. I'm going to be slight uphill, but I can still motor. It's just about patience and effort. Hey, it's Coach Nate here from The Run Experience. Today we're talking about power, and I'm excited to, to ask the question, will running with power make you a faster runner because I have a personal background with power meters on bikes. I trained with one as a triathlete and as a mountain biker and as a road cyclist for years and I definitely saw a lot of results. In this video, we're gonna talk about what power is, uh, we're gonna talk about how it's traditionally worked on a bike as a form of mechanical energy and how that actually changes when we get to running. And by the end, we're gonna get to you know the, the, the benefits of running with a power meter as well as the things that are drawbacks that don't work completely and may hold you back. But first of all, let's get into power. Power is a mechanical equation of work. It is force times distance over time, if you can remember one of those old equations on a, on a chalkboard, you got the P, you got the F, or sorry, you got the force, you got the F, you got the D over, over the time. And it was something that was relatively easy to quantify on a bike because your bike was a machine and they could cr strap sensors to your crank or your pedals or your hub and they could measure like slight flexing in the metal for the force you were putting through the pedals because it didn't matter what else your body was doing if you were putting force through the pedals that translated to you going down the road and for cycling because there's such varying terrain and because there's different types of winds you know speed wasn't really a good correlate for the effort you're putting in and heart rate as we'll get into later is a lagging indicator my heart rate doesn't spike until after i've put all the work in which can sometimes put me in the hole as an athlete but as we get into running which i'm going to show you in a second the ability to measure mechanical work with our running gets a little bit more complex because there isn't just certain types of forces like pressing through the pedals, there's actually negative forces. And then there are, you know, that spring in your step that we talk about, there's free elastic forces too. So how do we get all these things together into something that actually rely, reliably measures your output? And then is that helpful? Why do I wanna know what my mechanical output is? Don't I wanna know internally what's going on? What's the metabolic cost of me running at different speeds? But first, let's get into uh, what running with a power meter means and how it works. Now, the primary importance of, of power is not necessarily just the mechanical work that's being done, but it's correlate to the metabolic work that's, that's being done. How many calories we're burning? Sometimes we think about calories as you know, from a dieting standpoint, but also like an efficiency and power output standpoint, right? How much energy do we have to, to, or how much power do we have to create internally for that to translate to outward mechanical motion as we go forward? On the bike, there's a pretty good correlate going up and down and flats and everything, and it's pretty easy to measure on the bike, but with running, it gets a little bit more complicated, primarily because we're not just pedaling this way, it's not just forced through the pedals here, when we run, there is a positive concentric force that happens when I'm pushing off the ground. There's also a negative eccentric force that I have to account for that prevents me from going too fast. That helps me brake. So you know you put the brakes on when you go downhill and you, you slow down a little bit. I have to account for that force. And then there's also just the free energy return I get either both from my shoes or from, more importantly, my Achilles heel my plantar fascia, my feet, right, that, that spring. And I have to put all of these things together, which a few companies have worked hard to do. And what they have done is tried to test the forces they're getting using a uh, three-way accelerometer, a uh, barometer to measure atmospheric pressure, as well as a wind gauge to measure that, just to get a sense of, hey, how much effort that you're putting out mechanically uh, on a treadmill at different speeds and everything else and then they hooked you up to an you know oxygen exchange machine like you'd use for a vo2 max test and they're trying to quantify hey how much metabolic energy are you burning and how do i match these things up so i know it's a little complicated but i wanted to give you that background to show you how these things are working now there are power meters that can be just living in your wrist 
And then there are also ones like the Stride Power Meter that has a little foot pod here that goes from there. There's a few different companies that are doing it now. Because everyone are using algorithms to punch this stuff together, one company's definition of power doesn't line up with other companies' definition of power, which is a little bit of a shame because when I was on the bike, uh, power was power. It was like a root, it was a hard output. It was like, how much do you weigh? <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but for but for the but for the running companies, it's a little bit different right now. So let's really show you how this power meter works uh, by going for a run. And uh, I'm going to take you up a little uphill. And uh, as you can see, I'm not really moving, or I just took a step. So this thing is saying zero, 18, and I'll start to get going here. You know, one of the biggest mistakes runners uh, do, especially when they get on rolling terrain or hilly terrain, is they push too hard on the uphills and they don't go fast enough on the downhills. They kind of give up over and they, they run easy. And what this teaches you to do is a little bit the opposite, how to be really patient on the uphills so that you can turn around and accelerate over the top, go faster on the downhills, you save a lot of energy, you've got much more even pacing, and you end up being the guy who's a lot faster down the road is what we're talking about. So as I'm running, I'm gonna try to run the same speed. I'm at a 10 minute mile and I'm at 280. A second ago when I was at <laughs> nice steep climb here, now I'm at 390. Now I'm at 400. So, whew. so let's say, for argument, that I wanted to average 10 minute mile pace for an ultra race. And I wanted that 10 minute mile pace in the flat. If I was trying to just look at pace and hold that speed up hills, I would be crushing myself. I've just been working way, way too hard. And then in the downhills, I probably wouldn't be going fast enough. So we kind of do this internally and we can use other metrics to help us out. But this gives us real time feedback and really helps us dial in where we should be. And I got a lot of that from cycling and it definitely is beneficial for running as well. So this is so valuable to have when you're at the start of a longer race, like a half marathon, a marathon. I mean, even a 5K, 10K pacing matters a lot, but you're, you've done the work, you're really fit going into those events, uh, and the crowd just kind of sweeps you along. And it's so easy to go out the first couple miles just faster than you should. And it feels really good because you're so fit. But the problem is that you don't pay for that lesson until way later. Whereas if you have something with a power meter that just really helps you behave yourself, you let those people go because you know you're gonna see them again a little bit later when they start falling apart and you're much more consistent with the effort. That's one of the big key components for this thing. Here's another thing, you know, at the end of a race or a uh, workout, you know, your heart rate could be spiking for numerous reasons, cardiac drift, you're fatigued, you're dehydrated. And uh, speaking of fatigue, your, your concentration is starting to drift. And as we know, racing is not necessarily who goes the fastest, but who slows down the least. Having reliable numbers can not only help you stay patient early in the race, but it can keep you focused in those later miles when it really matters, because all you have to do is run to your numbers. And if you can run to your numbers in those final few miles, you know you'll be performing really, really well. Uh, I'd say final thing that I really benefit or find beneficial for the power meter is recovery days. A lot of runners are really bad at running slow enough on recovery. They just run all the same speeds all the time. And if I always just kind of live in the middle, whenever I try to run really fast, it doesn't really happen. And when, it, when, I, uh, when I try to run slow, I just don't like it. So when I try to go fast again, it's just not there and I just get stuck in this plateau. Having a power meter gives you very uh, good speed limit and a ceiling that you don't go above and beyond so that you actually have your recovery runs are actually recovery crazy so that when you go ahead back to your difficult workouts, you can really push there. But there are some negatives to the power meter as well and I wanna talk about that next. So there are a few drawbacks to running with power. Number one uh, is kind of the word, it's actually not really power, as I mentioned, uh, 
from what I can understand in the research that I've done, uh, various companies have tested runners on treadmills at different speeds, trying to measure the force impact, uh, as well as using uh, oxygen and CO2 exchange to measure the metabolic cost, because that's really what they were after. How much metabolically are you burning uh, from an effort standpoint. And they would assign that a number and they call that number your wattage, even though it's not a pure mechanical wattage like we saw in the cycling example. So that's fine, but the, the problem is that different companies have different algorithms and they've come up them slightly different ways. So if you are running with a puller or you're running with a Garmin or you have a stride uh, power meter, like they're all gonna say something slightly different. So just, just know that when you're comparing numbers with your buddies and just make sure that you just find one and you stick with them and then at least you'll have your numbers consistent. Another drawback is that when you're especially doing this, it becomes very tempting to constantly stare at your watch and uh, it's very distracting, uh, I think, for some runners. And depending on the wearable you have, if you don't have a foot pad, foot pod and it's trying to use your watch as the accelerometer, you're gonna mess up your power measurements by staring at your watch all the time and mess up your run form and probably slow down because you're staring at your darn watch and you're not focusing on your run. So in an effort to get better, we become distracted and we don't become as good anymore. And that kind of leads me to this next thing, which is we become so beholden to the numbers and a slave to the numbers that we actually don't, we stop listening internally to our body and figuring out what we can do. And some of my best performances where I trained with power meters a lot and uh, really welded that with a good internal sense. But then when I actually raced and competed, I would put a piece of tape over my power meter because I was so internally good at pacing, I didn't need a watch slowing me down anymore. And if anything, I needed to trust my training and my ability to push and not freak out if the numbers crept up every once in a while because I trained and had done the work and it was ready. Early on, it really helped me behave, but later in my career, I found that I was running, I was just focusing on my power meter too much. It was actually slowing me down because some would make a move and I'd be like, oh man, I can't run with them, it's beyond my power zone versus just like, you gotta go, you gotta compete. And some of you guys may just not be that far into numbers, although I trust if you're this far into this video, you are interested in putting those things together. So look, a power meter can absolutely make you a faster runner. It's an incredible training tool. It gives you that live feedback loop on your effort level. And again, it's not necessarily mechanical effort as much as a good correlate for that metabolic effort that is what we really care about anyway with runners. Uh, it can help in those various situations, but of course there's some things that we need to pay attention and be aware of. Now one of the most important ways for using a power meter is to actually establish better training zones for you. And I actually have a video right over my shoulder exactly how to do that, how to establish your lactate threshold with a uh, lactate threshold test. It'll give you heart rate zones, it'll also give you power training zones too. Pretty darn cool, check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.